Soy is like a political fruit or a uh, vegetable. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People call you a soy boy if you're a Republican. People call uh, weak men soy boys. That's like a, a, it's an insult. I never knew that. Soy is one of the rare foods that's actually attached to being a That's a food? Yeah, like if you're if you're a guy who's really into soy. And this is not my perspective. This is just, I just think it's a fruit. Hey, what is going on, everyone? So for a while now, there have been many conceptions of soy and meats, but with respect to one being feminizing and one being manly. Assuming you don't live under a rock, I'm sure you've heard the phrase meat is manly and the slang term soy boy. So today I'm going to go over some of the scientific and ethical implications of soy and meat with the goal of determining which of the two is more manly. Let's begin. So when determining which of the two are manly, we first need to define what we mean by manly. There are many definitions to the word manly and it's a very broad word that is used. The first Google definition reads, having or denoting those good qualities traditionally associated with men such as courage and strength. I think this is a pretty solid definition to operate from, so from here on out, we will be operating from it. Oh, and before I go on, I wanna speak about a conflict of interest that is clearly you know, associated with this video. I am a vegan and I do eat soy, and I have a long history of being really, you know, just strongly victim of the feminizing effects of soy. So I might be a little bit biased in judging this video, but let's move on anyway. So according to the definition of manliness, having strength is indicative of being manly. Let's start this investigation by looking at a study comparing the effects of supplementing with soy protein and animal protein for muscle and strength development. This study is a meta-analysis that contains nine studies involving 266 participants who were considered to be suitable for inclusion in this meta-analysis. Five studies compared whey with soy protein and four studies compared soy with other proteins, such as beef. I decided to track down the soy and beef protein comparison study reviewed in the meta-analysis and found the original paper titled Effect of Protein Source on Resistance Training Induced Changes in Body Composition and Muscle Size in Older Men. The conclusion of this beef and soy comparison study was that increases in muscle strength and size were not influenced by the predominant source of protein consumed by older men with adequate total protein intake. So the end point here is that between beef and soy when it comes to protein consumption, so long as a person is consuming adequate amounts of protein, it really doesn't matter which protein source you consume with the goal of trying to gain muscle. Unfortunately, most studies comparing soy protein to animal protein primarily involve whey protein. So I couldn't find many studies comparing soy protein to protein for meat, but regardless, I see no reason to believe that meat or beef increases muscle and strength to any greater degree than soy. So although I struggled to find data comparing soy protein to protein derived strictly from meat with the goal of comparing changes in lean body mass and strength, I did find a randomized control trial with the purpose of determining whether soy protein and whey protein supplements matched for leucine would comparably support strength increases in muscle growth in untrained individuals following 12 weeks of resistance training. The end conclusion was that there was no notable differences between the two groups. Now, I know this study is on whey protein and not meat protein, but I wanted to include it anyway because almost every meathead I know who has spouted the phrase meat is manly and soy is feminizing shoves whey protein down their throat seemingly daily. So at least with respect to muscle gain, I'm unsure why a whey protein guzzler would call soy protein feminizing when soy protein stands up to whey protein when it comes to muscle and strength development. Then I realized that outside of soy's effect on increasing muscle and strength, meat is manly whey guzzlers also make the claim that soy intake negatively affects male reproductive hormones. But according to this fairly recent and updated meta-analysis, regardless of dose and study duration, neither soy protein nor isoflavone intake affects total testosterone, free testosterone, E2 or E1 levels in men. So we have a fair amount of certainty at this point that soy can stand up against meat protein with respect to increasing levels of strength and muscle and whey protein, which meat flakes love to guzzle down for muscle growth. We also know that soy does not negatively affect male reproductive hormones. So let's put muscle and strength development to the side now and talk about blood flow, heart disease, and erectile dysfunction which is very manly for sure. We know from a meta-analysis of 395 metabolic ward experiments that replacing 60% of saturated fats by other fats 
and avoiding 60% of dietary cholesterol, which are both largely found in meat, would reduce blood total cholesterol by about 10 to 15%, with four fifths of this reduction being in low density lipoprotein cholesterol or LDL cholesterol. And we also know that there is a causal relationship between LDL cholesterol and cardiovascular disease. This relates back to meat and whether or not it is manly because erectile dysfunction has been linked to cardiovascular health due to the fact that erectile dysfunction is a vascular disorder. So because intake of saturated fat and cholesterol can increase LDL cholesterol, and LDL cholesterol causes cardiovascular disease, and cardiovascular health has been linked to erectile dysfunction, we have some reason to believe that meat has the potential to increase a male's risk of erectile dysfunction. When we take all of this into account, and the fact that soy does not have feminizing effects in men, and how soy also doesn't increase your chances of erectile dysfunction, I think it's pretty clear which of the two is manly. Actually, never mind. I mean, erectile dysfunction is a huge sign of being manly. I mean, every guy who wants to be a man is just striving for erectile dysfunction. I also forgot to mention that heart disease is our number one killer. And you know, being victim of our number one killer is a very manly thing. Dying early is just manly. Let's now touch briefly on the ethics of meat production and soy production, but with respect to what it means to be manly. In order to obtain meat, it is required for a vulnerable and innocent animal to have their life taken. Obtaining soy does not necessarily require this. Let's also keep in mind that these animals that are slaughtered for meat aren't just vulnerable and innocent, but also defenseless. Is preying on the defenseless considered manly? Or is it considered cowardly? I mean, most people I have talked to have said that it is pretty cowardly to prey on the defenseless. Now, of course, eating soy and being a male doesn't mean you are an ethical vegan male. I mean, one can eat soy over meat without identifying as a vegan male, and one can even be an ethical vegan male without eating soy. But it is often ethical vegan males who eat soy who are categorized as soy boys. Ethical vegan males are males who decide to stand up for the defenseless and the vulnerable. And referring back to the definition of the word manly which we are operating from, I noticed the word courageous. Call me insane, but I'm pretty sure that standing up for the innocent, the vulnerable, and the defenseless is pretty courageous hence manly, compared to preying upon them, which meat requires. So with everything covered in this video, what is more manly to you? The food that doesn't have feminizing effects, that can help you build muscle, and the food that can prevent you from having to prey upon the innocent and defenseless for protein. Or the food which, on the positive, can help you build muscle, but on the negative, requires you to prey on the vulnerable and the defenseless, while increasing your chances of developing erectile dysfunction and our number one killer, heart disease. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I mean, my opinion is that erectile dysfunction is extremely manly and it's something that, you know, every male is seeking in their life. You know, when I was 13 and my dad told me like, listen, you gotta be a man now, it's time to be a man. He told me like, you need to get, you know, erectile dysfunction as soon as possible. That was just what he told me. And that to me is just a very manly thing and I still strive for it every single day. Having a heart attack is also very manly. So to me and in my opinion, I think it's meat that is more manly than soy. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you support my work and want to support me on Patreon, the link is in my description. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird, stupid wannabe sense of irony here. Who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude, even vegans don't get your weird, stupid